Tower Lewis, Director of Operations, Elon University. I'm Tower Lewis, I'm 5'11", point guard, class of 2012 from Forsyth Country Day. I felt prepared. I mean, I always play with a lot of confidence. Um, some say cockiness on the court, but I mean, that's just something I really believed in myself as a player, and I felt like I can compete against anybody in the country at the time. Because I want to be one of the top point guards in the country, and I want to be able to play. I want to be a McDonald's All-American, so I got to work hard to reach my goal. And I was, I was blessed to have such an amazing brother and a, a family who really pushed me to become the player I am. It made me stronger as a person, basketball player, and it helped me get to being a McDonald's All-American. It helped me have a good college career. I was, always, I was always talented from an early age, and growing up in the AAU ranks, playing with my dad with the Carolina flight, I mean, I think our first six years, we won five of the first six AAU state championships. Right. And that's when, that's when AAU, I think, was really AAU at the time. When you, when you have a dream from that, that early stage, and you know that's what you want to do, um, you know you're going to lose. Like, not, like, in order to chase your dreams, you're going to have to give up on stuff. Like, I, was, I was a pretty good soccer player growing up. I had to quit that going into high school. Like, like friends, like, I, I mean, I have really great friends from high school that I still keep in touch with. But like you, you lose on a lot of that stuff. Your like, like I, 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 I didn't get to go to a prom. Like I didn't get to go to that stuff. But like all that stuff is worth it because I know I had that one goal in my mind that I want to be a college basketball player. You gotta work hard every day. You gotta put in the work. You cannot be lazy at any point because whenever you're taking time off, someone else is putting in work. So to be the greatest you can be, you gotta put in all the time that you have. I tell you what, AAU is probably one of the best moments of my life. Like you're just, in, like you're going, you're traveling to different cities. You're able to experience different cultures, different people from different environments. You're you're gaining relationships that will last forever. Like there's AAU teammates I still talk to today. Like that that relationship will never change. First ever team loaded team. Uh, I know Andrew came with you. And, and, Andrew Andrew White was on our team. Frank Mason was on our team. Um, Ajay Baru, Anthony Gill, Jackson Simmons. So we had. We had a great team. Um, I think we ended up losing like two games all year. And it was, talk, talk about a team who just really loved to play with one another. We brought energy every game. College coaches galore in the stands. We were Under Armour at the time, now they're Adidas, but like AAU, like we didn't really have a lot of practices. So you gotta figure it out on the fly. Yep. And that's sort of like how co college basketball is. Like you gotta figure things out on the fly. Things are going like, how are you going to respond to class? How are you going to respond to study hall, weightlifting? All of a sudden, you got to go to practice. This and it's just it's crazy. Ever since I was really little, my dad always told me look up the court, hit the open man. And ever since then, I mean, just I would always look forward to passing the ball and getting somebody else the points instead of myself. And just now, I just watch like players like Pistol Pete and see what they do, fancy passes, so maybe I can translate them into my game. I tell you, we played, we started off United Faith. It was like the nine o'clock game that night. And all of a sudden, no, nobody gave for Side Country Day a chance against United Faith. Was it Peter York and yeah, Peter, yeah. on that team? Yeah, uh -huh. and you had like Brax, Ian Miller. Yeah, Ian Miller and all those guys. And you're like, hey, you see a bunch of like Forsyth kids, like they're, they're not standing the chance. Right. All of a sudden we come out and we're, we're playing, well, I mean, we're beating them for the yep. good margin of the game. And then all of a sudden they had, they had they had better talent and their talent took over towards the end but I mean that was one of the blowout I blow up moments for me and then the next day I probably played one of the best games of my life against West Charlotte yep and we played it like a one o'clock game so like the crowd was like packed mm -hmm. at 9 p.m. and then all of a sudden we're like man we gotta play at 1 p.m. the next day right. and we're like there's gonna be nobody there but all of a sudden like everybody came back and I'm like 
this is crazy. And then like everybody's like, you got NC State fans everywhere. Like I wasn't committed there yet. And then, I mean, that fan base is just unbelievable there. And they're so passionate. And Whose idea was it to go to Oak Hill? Well, I actually turned it down my junior year. And, not a, and my dad's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, I'm like, well, I love it here. Like, I don't, I don't really want, I don't want to leave Craig. I don't want to leave Forsyth. My sophomore year, we almost beat Oak Hill. We were up by four going into the uh, first side. With, uh, they had Pichon Howard on and, the team. And Deron Lamb had 44 points against us. And I'm like, God, Lee, like, Dad, like, we're not far off. Like, obviously, I thought if we had a couple more players at, that we could have brought in at first side, like, we could have been the top powerhouse. Yep. And my dad stayed on me, stayed on me, stayed on me. Like, that whole, going into my senior year, he's like, Tyler, you got to make the move, you got to make the move. And I'm like, finally, I was like, yeah, I'm making the move. Like, it's only gonna help me in my career in the long haul. I'm able to play for Coach Smith, who I think is the best coach in high school basketball history. Um, it's amazing what he does. To, I mean, obviously people say, oh, he has the best talent. It's easy to coach. Well, it's hard to coach talent. It's hard to ma manage egos and that. And he was phenomenal. And he gave me the ball from day one. I had great teammates and Devontae Smith with Rivera, Jordan Adams, Ike Regbu, AJ Hammonds, so on and so on. Like. Great team, 44-0, national champions. Like, I couldn't ask for a better senior year. Three games um, that jump out to me that year. We played Emmanuel Mudiay and um, Preston Wood, Julius yeah, Randle. Where was that at? It was at the Hoopa. Um, played phenomenal up there. We ended up beating them by like 25, 30 points. The game that really sets it off for me is like the national televised game against Miller Grove and Tony Parker. We played on ESPN and probably had my best game of the season, honestly. Like, probably not like assist or points wise, but just like leading the team. And we, two guys got in foul trouble and just having to like lead the team, control the game. And right. I based my career off wins and losses, especially being a point guard, yep. not off my individual goals, yep. recognition. Um, being, being able to be a point guard and being able to lead a team. Um, I was always told from an early age, my dad always taught me, the point guard is always judged by wins and losses, no matter how many points you score assists. If you win a game as a point guard, you're going to get tons of recognition. Yep. And that's, that's always what I always had to do. Granted, I had to play different roles in my career as a point guard. There's times where I'd, at Forsyth where I had to score a lot, times at, in college where I had to be the facilitator. Yep. And you, you just, you play different roles. And throughout the whole process, you got you to learn, especially as a point guard, you got to be an all-star your role. And once you become an all-star your role, you really become a leader and you really are able to engage all your teammates and be able to lead not only vocal, not only by example, but vocally as well. Lewis scored the first five points of the game for the Wolf Pack. And Whenever you're a kid, you're, you're in your living room on a little tight goal and you're going through starting lineups and you're like, starting a guard. Like, so you always hear that moment and you're like, man, this is really true. Like, Obviously, you can't even hear your name in Cameron Indoor Stadium while you're getting introduced, but like, it was still a cool moment. I wouldn't say I was nervous. Um, I was blessed to be practicing besides Lorenzo Brown that whole year. I mean, Lorenzo was one of the best point guards in the ACC at the time. And when, when you're playing around that, I mean, I, honestly, I thought Lorenzo was probably one of the best point guards. So me playing against him every day just prepared me to become even more confident and ready for that moment. And he was, he was a tremendous teammate to me. He loved me, like, he gave me a lot of confidence. When he, when he went down for injury, I think it was the Virginia game, we played Virginia, Miami, and then Duke. I mean, I knew, like, I had that confidence built in me. Like, not, not that I was like, I'm ready for this moment. Like, this is something I dreamed of since I was a little kid. Like, playing in Cameron Indoor Stadium, not only playing, but starting and making it my first career ever start. I wish I could get the shot back against St. Louis. I'll take two, probably both of my last games from NC State in my last game at Butler. I've known Tyler for a long time and uh, really liked his game. I think he's a great player, great passer. I think he has 133 assists and either 30 or 33 turnovers. That's really impressive. UNC, um, just your last game and not, not, I mean, seeing it all come to an end, seeing everything you put your, literally your whole life into and I knew I wanted to kind of get into coaching at an early age and just knowing I see my whole basketball career as a player come to an end, it was tough. Get something in the paint. Well, they got a lot of drive kick guys on the floor. Nice oh. hesitation. Oh, no one there. Lewis fooled them all. A good call by Um, Definitely probably the hardest decision I've ever had to make. Um, 
knowing that I didn't want to go overseas and then come back in five years, six years and be start the, start the process over. And hope my main goal one day is become a head coach. Yep. Hopefully I have that opportunity. Um, but it was, it was difficult. I mean, I signed with the agent to go overseas and you know what? Prayed about it, went and talked to my family about it. And to this day, like you, still it's, still some, it's still something you think about. Like it's, I don't think it'll, I'll ever get to the point where I'm like, why did I not do that? Because as a basketball player, you always have that itch to get on the court. Being a coach is sort of like, um, I would say the way I was as a player, like someone who really believes in himself, really knows, really feels like he knows what he's talking about, really feels like he believes that relationships are key, really feel like if you don't have a good relationship, no matter how much you know about basketball, you got to learn how to see the inside and see what the person really cares about as a person other than just the basketball court. Probably my mom. My mom, she just really loves, like, there's not a bad thing I ever said about my mom. She, she's the type of person who really loves relationships. It's crazy, like, oh, I'll be walking, I'll walk around Statesville and you're like, oh, you're Margaret's kid. I'm like, how do you know my mom? Like, I don't even I'm know you. I get it. So it's, it, it really is, it really is great. Mm -hmm. Um, she cares, she loves me, like, she, she just wants what's best for me too. Right. And that's something that I, I've been blessed with because I grew up with two great parents who really showed me how to live life the right way. Too, too many people would take the game of basketball and the game of life for granted, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Tomorrow's never promised. Yeah. So you gotta really live your day to 100%. There, there's, no, there's no shortcuts in life. Yeah. I mean, if you take shortcuts in life, you're, n you're never gonna reach your goals. And I think the one thing that I value is how I attack every day and how I'm able to try to be a positive influ influence to everybody I come across. Um, I wanna thank my father, um, my brother, and all the coaches that helped me throughout my life, especially Coach Dawson and Coach White. I mean, they've been there for me every step of the way. Yeah, I want to give a special thanks to all y'all. Well, I feel really comfortable because I'm here with Coach Stragi, who I really believe in. He put, he's one, obviously, a coach who I loved yep. and someone I trust, I respect, someone who I'm going to love for the rest of my life, basically. And he's someone who I look up to, something way bigger in basketball. I, I believe in what he stands for. Um, he's a go-getter. He's a hard worker, and that's something I know he can I'm blessed that he had the opportunity to get this job here at Elon because I know he can turn this thing around. I sacrifice a lot for the game, basically because I love it. But see, I put a lot of time in the gym. I really don't go out with a lot of friends. I can't, don't party, nothing like that. So basically my time stays in the gym. Yeah, I love the game of basketball. It will never change. And it's something I always, always love and it will never change my whole lifestyle. I go home, watch basketball, and talk basketball. I mean, if you love it, that's where you'll be most of the time.